this video we are going to talk about the disposal of a house which has a primary residence and a business asset component to it. On the 1st of October 2008, Mpoor purchased a house in Randburg for 1.8 million rands and immediately moved into the house of his family. This is after 1 October 2001 guys, important, so that means that that 1.8 million rands will be the starting point of our base cost. From the 1st of October 2008 until the 1st of October 2015, so for 7 years, Mpoor stayed in the house of his family. During this time, he used 15% of the house as consulting rooms for a business he runs as a sole proprietor. Okay, important guys, the portion that is used as a business cannot be a primary residence, so not primary residence. Mpoor and his family moved out of the house on the 1st of October 2015. He immediately started renting it out to a third party. Mpoor rented the house to the third party from the 1st of October 2015 to the 1st of October 2019, so for four years. And Mpoor sold the house on the 1st of October 2019 for 4.5 million rands. Now what's important here is that during this period of time, it was not a primary residence either. Now, the times when it was not a primary residence or the portions that was not a primary residence cannot qualify for the primary residence exclusion. So, in the required, they ask us to calculate the capital gain. So, guys, let's do the first thing. So, when we are going to answer it, description, calculation, explanation, CGT, and RAND. Remember, we do our calculations or our CGT calculations in this amount. We do not put it in our RANDs or our taxable income column until we have calculated the taxable capital gain and that is after applying the annual exclusions and the uh, inclusion rate this question we are only looking at the capital gain so we are not going to do anything in that rands column right so this is the sale of the house so let's start just for a quick discussion here by doing the basic calculation proceeds four and a half million rands and a base cost of 1.8 million rands. That gives us a capital gain two point seven million rands. Alright, and now what I want you to understand about that capital gain is that if we look at this period of time that we had this property we had it from the 1st of October 2008 is when we purchased it. When it had a cost of 1.8 million. And we sold it on the 1st of October 2019 for 4.5 million rands. Now, that calculable gain that we just calculated of 2.7 million rands, that is for this entire period. But now, what do we know what happened in this period? Okay, so let's do the first one. From the 1st of October 2008 to the 1st of October 2015. Okay, and that was for seven years. For those seven years, we used this property 85% of the time as a primary residence and 15% of the time, we're going to call it a business asset. From the 1st of October 2015 to the date of sale, for four years we rented the house. So we used it 0% as a primary residence and 100% as a business asset for that period of time. So the first thing I want you to see is that this entire period of time here, which is four years, that period of time does not qualify as a primary residence. So what happens? We have to remove that period of time first. So less period rented out. So this will be the 2.7 million rands, our capital gain that we calculated, times 4 out of 11. So 4 out of 11 years, it was rented out. So 981818. That leaves us with 1718182. One, 
Now I want you to understand that 981, 981, 818, that goes into my CDT column, that portion must be taxed. It is a business asset. It is not a primary residence. Now at this point, I just want to quickly mention, a lot of the time, what students will say is they'll say, but why are you even doing a primary residence calculation? Because when he sold this on the 1st of October 2019, he was not using it as a primary residence. And you can only have one primary residence at a time. That phrase, you can only have one primary residence at a time, is misunderstood. That means for the period 1 October 2008 to 1 October 2015, when he called part of that house primary residence, he could only have that one house as a primary residence. It does not mean that when you sold it, it had to be a primary residence. So what does it mean? It means that when we do the calculation like we are now, if you used any asset at any point as a primary residence, then that portion of the primary residence, you can classify or qualify for the primary residence exclusion. As long as it happened after 1 October 2001, and as long as you were subject to CDT at that point in time. Now, so this 1718 over here, I want you to understand that 1718 is now the capital gain for this period, 1 October 2008 to 1 October 2015. We are now left of this capital gain over here. So now we know 15% of that capital gain is business, and again that must be tax so less business portion 1718182 times 15% gives us 257 727 that amount immediately goes into my CGT column I will have to pay CGT on it and we are left of 1460455 and this is the capital gain on the primary residence. So from that, we deduct our primary residence exclusion. And very important, this is limited to 2 million rands. So students will often now try and apportion this 2 million rands. That's wrong. You only apportion it for ownership. You've already done the apportionment over here by removing the business portions of it. So you get on your capital gain portion, 2 million of that is excluded from capital gains tax. So it's not a deduction, it just means excluded, so it means you will have no further capital gain. This portion we release where it was rented out, where we did not use it, paragraph 47. The portion where we used part of it as business, paragraph 49. By residence exclusion, paragraph 45.1a in this case. And that is it for this video.